Hi, Jason here from Upstart Epoxy, and in today's video, we're going to show you how we made this set of aluminum honeycomb knife scales using the new deep pour line that's coming very soon. Stay tuned. <music> Hi, Jason with Upstart Epoxy, and today in the shop, we are going to be doing something interesting. We're going to be exploring one of those undocumented usages for one of our epoxy lines. Now, in previous videos, everyone got to see me use and test the new deep pour line. Today, we've got a little bit of this deep pour test line sitting in my shop, and we are going to make some knife scales using this aluminum honeycomb. Now this is expanded aluminum honeycomb. It's about a five by five by about three quarter inch thick and we built a mold for it. What we're gonna do is we're going to mix up some deep pour. Uh, we are going to divide it into two vessels. So these are my two vessels. And then we are going to pigment them. We've got kind of a muted like teal seafoam green here. And then we've got kind of a dark grayish green here. And we're kind of going for, I call it a, a uranium look. So the muted gray and green. It's going to be really interesting. So, got our mold, made it out of acrylic. This is adjustable so that if I build a bit bigger base for a different size project, I can just drill new holes in the acrylic walls and move them out. It's expandable. But for right now, we're doing a five by five. All right, for this project, we calculated about 450 milliliters of usage. It's a two to one ratio, two parts A, one part B. So it's gonna be 300 milliliters of A and 150 milliliters of B. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start with part B because we need 150 milliliters of it and we actually have a 150 milliliter graduation. Also because part B is actually thinner. So it's easier to mix when it's on the bottom. And the secret is to pour the right amount the first time every time that's a joke because i usually never pour right all right so now we pour 300 milliliters part a and i've got a graduation right under 500 for the 450. now for people asking how i got the 450 milliliter graduation milliliters and grams of water are an equal conversion so if you have a scale you put 450 grams of water in it and mark where the level is at room temperature so 450 milliliters we're going to take our little stir stick and we're just going to start stirring now the deep pour line is a lot thinner than the super gloss so you don't need to put in as much effort to stir it but it does need to be stirred it goes from cloudy to clear when it is completely mixed, just like the super gloss coating. Scrape your edges, scrape your bottom. Technically, this is gonna be a two vessel pour because I'm going to pour out of my primary container into secondary containers and continue to mix. That's after I get it completely mixed and then mix in the pigments. All right, so we're looking good. Nice and clear, minimal air bubbles. Great thing about the deep pour line is it's a lot thinner, so the air bubbles escape a lot easier and it cures a lot slower, so that's the part that allows you to pour deeper. All right, so now we wanna try to do pretty much even. So, little A, little bit B. All right, that's about right. All right. So, got our two vessels. We're gonna start adding in our lighter seafoam algae green. Not too much, I mean, save some just in case. And then we've got our darker grayish green. It's like a silver platinum. All right, grab some of our other stirs. And start mixing it up. There's that pearlescent white green. That's a lighter green, but it's still opaque. And that's what we want. We're not going for a translucent look. We're going for a nice, thick, solid color. And that's gonna polish up really well. I always think about how this stuff is going to be used as the end part of the project. What is it gonna look like when it's finished? You know, sometimes it's an experiment to find out how it works. And sometimes you get that idea in your head and that's, that's your target. That's what you're going for. That's what you want to see. So as a woodworker over the years, I have made a bunch of knife scales and pen blanks for people. The kind of effect that we're gonna go for is we're gonna mix the two resins 
the two colors from opposite corners and allow it to meet in the middle. And then we're going to take our aluminum honeycomb and drop it in. And it's gonna slice through the resin, getting rid of any air bubbles, and it's gonna slice the colors. And the colors are gonna get caught in the cells. So when we split it open, when it becomes knife scales, hopefully we'll get a really interesting effect right in the center of those scales. All right, so here we go. Now before it mixes too much, we'll take our aluminum honeycomb, just drop it in. There it goes. Get a little tap, make sure it gets all the way down in there. Now this is gonna be really interesting. See the color separation right here? Hopefully we can keep that inside the cells. Hopefully the, the thinner epoxy won't mix completely on the inside. And when we split it open, we're gonna get a really interesting effect. Now, this is gonna take a while to cure, so, we're gonna use the magic of the internet and see you in a minute. Hey everyone, we're back. And we have let our nice little mold cure for several days. We've got our two-tone deep pour in here with the aluminum honeycomb. Got a nice little dark splotch here, a little uh, custom green color we came up with. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to demold it and then we're gonna take it to the bandsaw and slice it in half, split it open, kind of see what we got. Let's go ahead and get it out of the mold real quick. You're gonna see, uh, see the benefit of using acrylic when it comes to this resin. All right, here we go. Just peels right off. Get this out of the way. And this makes a nice little reusable, expandable mold. All you have to do is change out the base plate size, redrill holes in your acrylic. Silicone just peels right off. All right, there's our plate. Get some of this, uh, Silicone out of the way. Peels right up. All right. There we go. So we got our blank out of the mold. We're gonna peel this caulk off. You don't wanna hit this caulk with any of your uh, tools like saws or bandsaw or table saw or anything like that. It likes to catch and not the safest. Cut off as much as you can before you start working on it with power tools. All right. So that's our reusable mold, about five and a quarter by five and a quarter. It's good for knife blank, knife scales, pen blanks. So we get this cleaned up and it's good to go for another round. So we're gonna take this to the bandsaw, get it split open and uh, get it cleaned up and, oh, and this stuff cures hard. We'll come back and show you what we got. Okay, we're back and we're finally finished with our knife scale blanks. What we did was we took it to the table saw, trimmed off the perimeter edges, cleaned them up, brought it into a nice square size, took it to the bandsaw and split it and book matched it so that when they're opened up, they're a mirrored image of each other. And those are the facing images. Those are the, the sides of the scales that are gonna be facing out. And then what we did was we finished the interior faces, which are going to be the exterior faces, the display face. I went past uh, what I originally intended to do because I wanted to show everyone just what type of quality you could get out of uh, finishing these surfaces. So what we did was we went to the dry sanding, uh, 120 through 600, and then we went to the wet sanding system and we went from 1500 to 3600. And then I separated the plates and then took one plate all the way up to 12,000 grit in a wet sanding system and then I polished with a light cut. So we're gonna be able to see the difference in the two. Show you just how far you can take it. All right, so this is the 3600 grit wet sanding. It's got a nice smooth finish, nice matte finish. The aluminum comes out. You get to see, you can kind of see a little translucence through the, the plate, a little bit of 
tiny bit of light transmittance. That way you get the colors and sheens and everything like that. So that's the 3600. And this is the 12,000 and polished plate. And so this is the difference. Proper finishing, uh, proper sanding, proper polishing can really bring out a beautiful, beautiful face in a worked and tooled surface. As I said, these plates were cut with a bandsaw. So the bandsaw leaves jagged marks throughout the surface. And so you're dealing with mixed media here, the epoxy where it meets the aluminum, uh, you're always gonna have an imperfect surface. But being able to properly sand and finish these plates is a really big deal for a lot of people. Alternate usage for Upstart Epoxy's deep pour line that will be on the website. Think about what you can use it for. It's not just for uh, pouring river tables. It's not just for woodworking. Or this is for a completely different purpose. This is for knife making. So if you have some buddies that are blacksmiths like me, make them a set of knife scales. Have them turn them out. See what they can do. It's it's really interesting. And on a side note, this deep pour stuff is incredibly, incredibly tough. Like you've got very, very little contact area between some of these pieces. They don't even peel out. Like this is this stuff is in there. This stuff is cured. Deep pour line coming out or is already out. Knife scales, aluminum honeycomb, two-tone. We're calling this uh, this little mix of gray and green uh, uranium. That is the color we came up with. I'm Jason and on behalf of everyone at Upstart Epoxy, we thank you for joining us on in this video for an alternate usage for the deep pour line that's coming out or that is already out. There are so many varied uses for these epoxies, for the deep pour, for the super gloss coating. Uh, we'll never get to uh, explore them all. I know I won't. So if you have any suggestions about anything that you want to see us attempt to see if we're capable of doing it, or it, what type of epoxy is right for what job, uh, leave us a comment, Facebook, Instagram, and we'll see what we can do to, to try to make sure that your next project is a success. All right. Have a great day.